Welcome to Startup Health Now, the weekly web show that celebrates the healthcare transformers and change makers reimagining healthcare. Today, we are at the Wearable Tech and Digital Health Conference here in San Francisco with a very special guest, Vivek Wadwa, who is a fellow at Stanford on the faculty of Singularity University and also a serial entrepreneur. Stick around, it's gonna be a very exciting show. It is the duty of leaders to lead, of the creative to create, of the daring to do. The free world expects leadership of us. Its fate and our fate depends upon our leadership. We are industrious, inventive, restless, with the fires that burn within us. I say that nothing is easy, and the best things are the hardest. And all our troubles, all our immense difficulties, now and in the future, can I say, be solved if we have the will, the courage. The future is to those who take those who take it. Vivek, it's wonderful to be with you here today. Thank you for Great taking to be the here. time. <laughs> so I thought we'd start by learning about you, your backstory, what what you're most passionate about. You know, I, I'm a tech entrepreneur who became an academic because I had a heart attack. I mean, I had to do something different, so I joined academia and started learning about U.S. competitiveness and things like that. And I was pretty pessimistic about the future until I came to Silicon Valley and joined up with Singularity University and started learning about exponential technologies and advances. Now, if you read my writing, I consider this to be the most amazing period in human history when we're going to solve the grand challenges of humanity, when we're going to fix the problems that have held mankind back since since mankind's inception, when we can now build this Star Trek future, this amazing future in which we're not living just to make money, we're living to uplift mankind, enlightenment. I mean, this is the world that we could be headed into. And why are you optimistic today? Because technology has advanced to the point that anyone anywhere can solve a big problem. We're not dependent on governments or big research labs or the powerful to do it anymore. Anyone can now build a medical device that comes up with a cure for a disease, I mean, which really helps you prevent the disease or helps you, uh, you know, uh, cure cancer, perhaps. Right? You can actually, you know, Google is now looking at building nanobots, but the fact is you don't need Google's doing that. You can have entrepreneurs now building all sorts of new technologies that could solve the problems of health, that could make the world cleaner and energy efficient, that we're building new technologies which will take us into an era of unlimited clean energy. Um, I mean, if you start looking at all of the technologies that are possible and, and the problems that need to be solved, you'll find that it's now becoming possible to so solve is, these big problems. Is it mainly because of technology or what, what role does the entrepreneur or the innovators themselves play? The technology is useless without a human being. Mm. So, so you need entrepreneurs who understand problems to solve the technologies. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm an optimist. I'm also critical about Silicon Valley because the majority of what we do here is the same stupid apps. You know, one day it'll be photo sharing, another day it'll be some kind of social media. I mean, it's, we're, we're basically wasting 80, 90% of the, of the money and energy in Silicon Valley by focusing on the wrong problems. This is why, you know, I came to this conference because you have entrepreneurs here who are solving the problems of human health, mm. which is critical. Mm. I mean, if we don't have health, we don't have life. And without that, nothing matters. So if you can solve health, now you can st start solving the problems of, of uh, uh, you know, energy and education and, and, and you know, poverty and you know, basically the needs of human beings, you make the world a better place. So what would your message be to, you know, there's all these entrepreneurs, great talent, focusing still on networks and photo sharing and extraordinary yeah. technology. Get a life, my uh, friends. I mean, go, you're, you're better than this. You, you should be using your energy to make the world a better place. Yes, you, you, know, you have a one billion, billion chance that you might strike it rich if you build that stupid photo sharing app but it's really a billion, one in a billion chance, or maybe one in a million chance. But if you start solving the problems of humanity, you have a much like, a higher likelihood because there are fewer people doing it. And, if you, and there's so many problems to be solved. There are literally a billion problems to be solved. You could make the world a better place and, and impact others in a very positive way. And if you do that, you might actually do very well for yourself financially as well. So my advice to entrepreneurs always is to solve real world problems. Don't go chasing rainbows. Don't do stupid things because you've seen some venture capitalist do an interview about some new technology that's hot that they're investing money in. Forget those people. You're better than this. So your advice is focus on these big challenges, real world problems. What other advice or maybe lesson learned 
lessons learned from your own experience as an entrepreneur, would you share with entrepreneurs either in health, healthcare, or maybe considering coming over to healthcare? No, healthcare is one of the most important fields there is. Like I said, like I said without health, we don't have life. And then it doesn't matter, nothing matters if you don't have it. So, and also, m medicine is now becoming an information technology. Every part of this industry is being uh, taken apart by technology and, and you can now start solving problems. When I say being taken apart, you start off with simple diagnostics. Being able to now monitor the uh, physical condition of our bodies, everything from our temperature to our lifestyle to habits, to the, uh, uh, I mean, to our, you know, uh, fluid levels, and you, know, you name it, every aspect of human health can now be, be monitored and detected. Mm. And then you have the genome itself. The fact is that sequencing costs have dropped to about $1,000 right now. With five years, you're talking about $100. 10 years, you're talking about practically zero, which means that we've become data. And data, once you have that, you apply AI to it, you apply different types of analysis techniques to it, and your doctors become software. And it's going beyond even the genome, microbiome, and Micro, every, absolutely. The microbiome everything we're is doing. Sequence, exactly. Yeah. That's again an, a, in a treasure trove of data that we can start gathering. Yeah. So there's so many different approaches to this thing, so many problems to be solved. We can approach it from many different ways and really improve uh, humanity itself. Now, you wrote an article pretty recently about this concept of some companies focus on product, right. uh, others focus on business model, which is, can be very important, obviously. Um, but they're, the winners of the future are really focusing on building platforms, and we're seeing this in other sectors besides healthcare. Um, can you unpack that a little? Yeah. What, what does that mean? What it means is that rather than solving one particular problem, coming up with one solution, solve a class of problems. Really, if we, I'll give you an example. Um, this company in, in, in New Delhi that I wrote about, uh, which has built a device called the Swasta Slate. What they did essentially was that they looked at medical instruments and realized that they have simple sensors which can be you know, bought very cheaply, extremely expensive medical equipment. They said, what if we simply took the same sensors and put them into a, into a tablet and fed the data um, and converted the signals into something that was understandable by the tablet and then we wrote our own software to analyze it. They built a platform for different medical devices. This device is already saving lives in northern India. It's a $600 device that can do about 32 different medical tests now. But they chose to build a platform versus yet another test. So what you do is you, you essentially open up what you're doing so that other people can build on it. This is how Apple became the most valuable company in the world, is by building a platform. iTunes and the app stores are platform. And they're continuing to do it with uh, health music, kit and music research kit. And and research and kit. I mean, yeah, absolutely. But that's what Silicon Valley figured out, is that it builds open, you know, open platforms that other people can build solutions on. So do you think that opportunity is still wide open in healthcare, or yeah, who do you think will All win across there? the board, I mean, you can uh, build a platform for analyzing genomics. Mm -hmm. You pick a particular field in medicine, you can build a, a platform for, for curing cancer. I mean, I, I don't know, you know exactly what solutions entrepreneurs should build, but the fact is that you can now think of solving a class of problem rather than an individual problem and get other people to work with you. What this does is it creates a network effect. You have other people now building on your, on your solution and it, and it you know, potentially goes viral. You have dozens of people, hundreds of people, thousands of people now all building on your base, helping you perfect the technology and then spreading it to millions of people. This is how platforms work. So, we're, we're living in a very exciting time in, in history, as you, as you mentioned. Maybe take us out into the future, a few years. Um, what, what are your predictions? What, what do things look like? It's, I mean, from a healthcare point of view, I see the technology industry taking over medicine. That the current system is geared towards keeping us sick. Because frankly, whichever way we slice it, it's geared towards sick care. It's not healthcare. We're not preventing disease. The establishment doesn't make money if we don't take drugs if we don't go to the hospital, if we don't see doctors, right? The good news is that the technology industry is geared towards keeping us well because all they want to do is steal our information, mine it, and sell the, the data. So what I joke is that Google, you can take all my data, keep me healthy. But the fact is this is an opportunity for entrepreneurs now to start building technology solutions to health and to take over from the medical industry and prevent people from getting disease in the first place. 
And what's the global lens on this? There's probably five billion people in the world today that have access to no care at all. Yeah, exactly. Um, I see this as a big opportunity in the future where hopefully everyone in the world has access to care because of technology and innovation. What are your thoughts in that regard? Absolutely, that this is an equalizer for, the, for, for technology is democratizing. Over the next three to four years, you're going to have another two or three billion people all over the world coming online on the internet. They're going to be using smartphones, internet connected. So now what happens is that they have access to the same knowledge that we do. They have access to the same apps that we do. The sensor devices you need to be able to detect health, they're becoming inexpensive. So would, would your advice to investors or entrepreneurs, you know, everyone's focused on the U.S. market, not everyone, but many are focused on the U.S. But market, that's a huge the US market. market. It's 300 million people, whereas we have 7 billion people worldwide. Why bother with the U.S. when you have so much regulation here and a system that's biased against entrepreneurs? So it really, it's geared towards protecting itself from competition. This is what the entire medical system in the United States is. Starting with the, uh, with the doctors down to medical devices, it's all geared towards preventing competition. Go to, go to South America, go to Mexico, go to Peru. And you think there's a leapfrog opportunity. We've seen this you know, in other areas, banking, telecommunications. You can leapfrog and you can now transform the entire system. This is what entrepreneurs can do today. Hmm. So, um, what do you do to stay healthy? You mentioned at one time you had some health issues. Are, are you taking care of yourself and, and how do you use technology to stay healthy perhaps? No, I'm guilty. Okay. I'm not looking after myself as well as I should. I try to go hiking, I meditate and things like that. But, uh, but um, what I'm doing right now is learning all I can and teaching. So, uh, I, I, you know, teaching's I, healthy, right? Teaching's healthy, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I'm keeping myself emotionally and intellectually engaged. Do you have um, any books that you recommend, books or apps or things that listeners out there in the, in the ecosystem you would highly recommend? I recommend reading. All the knowledge I talk about is publicly available on the web. I mean, if you go to my website, wadwa.com, wadhw.com, you'll see lots of articles. I refer to other websites and have links in there. But the knowledge of the world is available to you. You don't need to come to my website. You don't need to go to any, read any particular book. The problem with books, by the time they're published, they're obsolete already. Mm. This is how fast things are moving. So don't waste your money on books. Go and follow up on all of these sites where knowledge is. In the medical field, there are dozens of, of amazing websites where you get free knowledge. Never mm. before have we had access to knowledge for free. The latest medical advances are available to you. The latest breakthroughs in technology are available to you. The latest information about other industries is available to you all for free. Mm. So take advantage of it. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for everything that you do and sure. sharing your wisdom and for Absolutely. being here today. We really Absolutely. appreciate it. Good. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Good. We'll see you soon. Thank you.